Ever since Ferris Bueller looked into the camera and lectured us all about how life moves pretty fast, the self-referential technique known as breaking the fourth wall has been all the rage. For some reason, people can't get enough of being reminded that they're doing the thing they're obviously doing, whether it's watching a movie, reading a book, or playing a video game. You are watching a YouTube video. You are watching a YouTube video. Subscribe. 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 But the most creative games aren't sad satisfied with just calling attention to themselves. They want to break out of your game system and mess with your mind in all sorts of unpredictable ways. When you're in the middle of a boss fight and you're tricked into thinking your HDMI cable's on the fritz, or when you're feeling guilty for failing to press a button often enough to keep a chunk of code alive, it's a good bet there's a statistic developer out there somewhere cackling to themselves. Here are nine games that messed with our reality. Number nine, Soma. Frictional game is 2015 survival horror video game. Soma was creepy enough without throwing any genre bugs busting tricks into the mix. The game's already got you wandering an abandoned undersea facility in the aftermath of what may or may not have been the apocalypse, pursued by monstrous abominations while seeking to learn the fate of humanity as well as the origin of your own consciousness. But just in case you didn't have enough on your plate, every time one of those aforementioned abominations lumbers into your field of view, your monitor comes down with a serious case of static. Want to look behind you so you can get your bearings while running for your life? Static. Want to flail around looking for the exit? Static. Just want to admire Frictional's superlative arc direction? Too bad! Static. Scary? You bet. Frustrating? Hell yes. Number 8. Tamagotchi slash Gigapet slash Seaman. When it comes to messing with reality, there's more than one way to skin a cat, or dog, or bizarre human-fish hybrid. The late 90s saw the flowering of a new genre in video games, virtual pets. These weren't so much games as digital embodiments of perpetual neediness. Whether the pet in question was a keychain-sized plastic doodad with an LED display, like 1996's Tamagotchi and 1997's Gigapet, or whatever the hell this thing from the Dreamcast game Seaman was, the psychological hooks were much the same. The game would guilt trip you into performing repetitive tasks to keep the adorable bundle of ones and zeros alive and happy. Some children were so obsessed with their Tamagotchi that, according to a 1997 New York Times article, they were banned from school after third graders ignored a standardized test to feed their pets. And I mean, seriously, who didn't? What was most insidious about this trend was that it suggested game developers weren't happy just monopolizing your entertainment hours, they felt they weren't chalking up a win unless you were obsessing over their creations at all times. After all, what better way is there to mess with reality than to make you ignore it because you're trying to remember the last time you fed your annoying hunk of plastic? Th did you just poop again? Number 7, Sega's Toilet. Okay, so this one is a bit of a cheat. It's less about the game reaching into your reality, and more about your reality, shall we say, pouring into the game. In 2012, Sega, responding to a demand articulated by no one, unleashed the Toilet, a device that turns ordinary urinals into wondrous fun factories. To those who thought relieving an overloaded bladder was pleasure enough by itself, Sega cries, Have you no imagination, sir? Now, through the pressure, volume, and duration of your prodigious pee stream, you can compete in a no-holds-barred nose-blowing contest, create a gust of wind so powerful it threatens to blow up the skirt of a sexy newscaster, or top off a phallic specimen jar for a gorgeous nurse. We thought that hands and feet were all we needed for gaming. As to the lamentable absence of female-friendly toilet devices, I can't decide what's more sexist, denying women the opportunity to play these games or imagining that they would ever want to. Number 6, Portal. Okay, we all know the cake is a lie, but the real deception played by Valve's 2007 first-person puzzle classic is much more devious. The game starts you out in a series of self-contained chambers, egged on by a condescending robotic voiceover to solve puzzles of increasing difficulty. You complete room after room, pulled forward by the endorphin drip of success, lulled into a conviction that what you're experiencing is, in fact, the game. But is it? Because at a critical moment, when the aforementioned cake turns out to be less a cake and more a furnace designed to burn you into a cinder, you must break out of the sequence of test chambers and make your way across the remnants of a decaying industrial facility, which is where the remainder of Portal is set. In light of this twist, what have you been playing up to that point? Good god. It was just a tutorial all along! That's right! Val figured out a way to make you play the tutorial! Does their diabolical cruelty know no limits? Uh, oh, that's right. Half-Life 3. Number 5. Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. Lots of games over the years have used insanity as a game mechanic, but the 2002 GameCube action-adventure title Eternal Darkness got a little more experimental than most. As you play through the game, your character's mental state 
state is represented by a green bar on screen, the sanity meter. As the meter gets lower, various sanity effects kick in. Some of these are conventional enough. Weird camera angles, bleeding walls, spooky sound effects of screaming women and children, but others simulated technical glitches, such as a green volume meter appearing and changing by itself, or an apparent deletion of all your save game files, or a truly terrifying blue screen of death system crash. Wait a few seconds though, and after a white flash, the game will return to normal. So it's all in good fun, just as long as you didn't grab your GameCube out of your entertainment center and hurl it through the window. Then all bets are off. Number 4. Hacker. 1980s adventure games followed a pretty straightforward template. You'd start out with a chunk of expository text along the lines of, you are standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door, or you wake up, the room is spinning very gently around your head, or maybe you're seated in your office, your rundown shoe heels add a few more scuff marks to the oak desk in front of you. If you were lucky, you'd get more crudely drawn 8-bit illustrations to punch up the atmosphere. On the other hand, maybe you played Activision's 1985 adventure, Hacker, in which case you started out with Jack's squat. Log on, please. That's all you get. Want to check the instruction manual for some assistance? Joke's on you. There is no instruction manual. You're on your own. Hacker doesn't follow through on its uncompromising vision. After a few failed password attempts, you're helped by a computer error which shepherds you into a more conventional graphic adventure, but from the start to finish it maintains the illusion that, instead of being a guy sitting at a computer playing a computer game, you're a guy sitting at a computer not playing a computer game. Talk about suspension of disbelief. Number 3. I Love Bees One of the most creative viral marketing campaigns in video game history, the I Love Bees website launched in 2004 to herald the upcoming release of Bungie's sci-fi shooter sequel Halo 2. Bungie leaked the site's existence via unconventional methods such as jars of honey mailed to select gamers, or the I Love Bees URL flashing on Halo 2 trailers. Visiting the site, curious gamers found an innocuous hobbyist site, apparently taken over by some malignant code that was causing a quote, module core hemorrhage. Oh yeah? Don't you hate those? Poke around the links, solve some puzzles, listen to some audio logs, and you'd uncover the storyline of Melissa, an alien artificial intelligence that has somehow wormed its way into the World Wide Web. Melissa's backstory turns out to tie the present day world in with the future fiction of the Halo games. Whether I Love Bees boosted the sales of a game that was already part of a world famous multi million selling franchise is hard to say, but it boosted the cool factor of Halo and probably of Beekeepers too. Oh yeah. Number 2. Metal Gear Solid. Plenty of ink has been spilled expounding on the mad genius of legendary game designer Hideo Kojima. But in addition to being bizarre, illogical, and incomprehensible, his designs could also be damned clever. Case in point, the original Metal Gear Solid for PlayStation 1, which reached its momentum of maximum meta in the cutscene prelude to the Psycho Manus boss encounter. During an unusually long bit of pre-battle preening, the self-described most powerful practitioner of psychokinesis and telepathy in the world shows off his paranormal bona fides by reading off the contents of your memory card. He'll not only point out which games you've been playing, he'll even comment on the frequency of your saves. Then he'll showcase his awesome powers by using your DualShock's controller's rumble to move it across the ground and predict your every move so that you need to switch controller ports to have a fair shot at beating him. That's not just breaking the fourth wall, it's more like taking a wrecking ball to the fourth wall, then sweeping up all the plaster and jumping up and down on it for half an hour. Number 1. Majestic. Imagine. An adventure game so realistic that it unfolds through instant messages, email attachments, and crappy low-resolution videos. Actually, don't imagine it. It sounds dull. But it didn't in 2001, when Electronic Arts Redwood Studios rolled out the conceptually bold alternative reality game Majestic. Preceded by a barrage of publicity, in one preview, computer gaming world's George Jones enthused that it would quote, fuck with your head in ways you've never imagined. The game spiked industry buzz, but it didn't sell copies. That might be because the concept you don't play it, it plays you, sounded more fun than the execution turned out to be. After all, unwanted voicemails, annoying IM pings from co-workers, and dubious spam attachments are the sort of thing we play games to get away from, not to get more of. Even if they happen to unweave a Byzantine X-Files-esque narrative about grand conspiracies, biological warfare, and shadow governments. Still, it was an impressive effort. Developer Neil Young's team created 60 fake web pages for just the first two episodes. Note to out-of-work web developers everywhere, the alternate reality genre Genre is your friend. As impressive as all this digital gaslighting is, it's nothing compared to what's coming. After all, in the age of Oculus Rift, augmented reality, and Google Glass, there's no telling what new and exciting methods developers will come up with to stimulate schizophrenia. With any luck, a reality-free existence is within our grasp. Be sure to leave a like on our Facebook page, there's a link in the description, and don't forget to subscribe to Arcade Cloud for more top 9 lists. Thanks for watching.